Today, I would like to share something very timely. I call it very timely because it is a starting of the year and the message that I will bring to you, the Word of God will bring to you this morning to me. I titled it, title, there is a title of the message. The title is Keep Pressing On. Keep pressing on. Our text is found in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. And uh, I would like everyone to, uh, to read the passage in front. If you don't have your Bibles, I have prepared it for you. It's all read and uh, it's allow the Holy Spirit to move in our lives by this word. Let us read it all together. Not that I have already attained, or I have already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that which for Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. In verse 13 it says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. In verse uh, 14 it says, I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let's repeat it again. I press, I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So the title is Keep Pressing On. So this year is, uh, you know, we are in the first week of the year. We are on, only in January 4th. And you know that, you know, as an, an, uh, as an information to everyone, that the month of January, maybe you don't know about the background, this is named after the Roman god Janos. That's why it's called January, who was usually depicted as a man with two faces. This Roman god is called Janos and this man is depicted with two faces. One face look from the past and one face is looking, you know, in front. So one is looking back into the year that had passed and that face showed sorrow and dismay. So all the bad things in 2018. And another face is looking forward to the coming year and shows signs of hope and confidence. That is called January. But that is the Roman God. And we don't believe in it. But that year, no, that this month is called January because of this Roman God. So in our lives also, there are things that we need to look back no? and see the good things, the bad things, and the things happen you know, throughout the year, 2018. And right now we are positively thinking and we are also uh, looking forward to a big hope, with confidence that there is something good for us in the future. No, around this time of the year we cannot help looking back we can help but remember the things that happened and we can see the highlights of our lives. Maybe it is a failure, maybe it is a personal trial or unfulfilled plans or projects. Maybe some uh, circumstances of our lives that made us think about it the whole year. And until now we can forget about it because there is something that we experience. Especially when you have sorrow, if you have a problem, and that problem goes you to sink down below. And during that time you can remember how hard it is and how, uh, uh, how God brought you up from sinking. And maybe some of you, you experience also uh, with a lot of achievements. 
a lot of things you have achieved and a lot of things uh, you receive positively from your company, from your, uh, from your, uh, from your family, from anything, from anyone. When you have these things, then you, you highlight those things and you remember them. And it will become a good memory for, for all of you, for all of us. So, in this year also, you know, we are celebrating the sixth year anniversary of the church. And uh, I'm so blessed with the sixth year that the Lord, we are, you know, we, we, we are sometimes in the, you know, in elevated position. Sometimes we are in the low portion of our, of our ministry. Sometimes, uh, sometimes of the year, you know, in, in six years, we have a lot of divisions. Maybe two or three divisions. And uh, a lot of people uh, left the church, a lot of people came to the church, and we experienced all those things in the year, you know, in the sixth year of the church. And I'm so blessed that the Lord still is very faithful to the church. And until now, we are still continually praise, praising, worshiping Him. And we are still, you know, we have the, the fire in our hearts to, to go to do the work of the Lord. Amen. So everyone is excited with the anniversary. Because we are planning, a, you know, a, a concert. You know, showing the, the talents of our brothers from Pakistan, from Nigeria, from Philippines, showing their culture and how to, uh, to bless them. And in one church, these people can exist all together. Amen. That's why we are called United Christian Fellowship. Amen. We don't minister, you know, we don't minister only to the Filipinos. But also we, we receive, we accept all kinds of nationalities. Because in heaven, the Bible says that from every tribe, every town, every peoples of the earth, the Lord, you know, He saw a multitude of them. From every nation, country, from every tribe, from every race, from every tongue. It means that, you know, spoken, spoken word. Maybe thanks. Maybe in the uh, in Pakistan you have one like Urdu, but you have a lot of different different dialects. This is my country. In the Philippines we have Tagalog as our main and uh, main language. But we have, you know, in every 10 kilometers maybe the, the language is different. That is why in heaven the Bible says that every tribe, every nation, every every tongue meaning the spoken words the spoken dialect so that is the, you know, the vision of the church to reach out all the peoples you know in Abu Dhabi only or UAE we have maybe more than 200 different nationalities we are not uh, commanded to reach all of them but at least do everything that you can do to reach out and maybe what the Lord will give you. Sometimes I will just bring a, an African African man. He will bring from Nigeria, he will bring from Uganda, from Kenya, from all the, the, the countries, you know, the places in Africa. Sometimes a Nepali will come, and sometimes, you know, even Muslims, they are invited to come to the church. So this, this passage that I read to you in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14, that the Lord used Apostle Paul to give us some excellent counsel concerning the past and the future. That is, this is the one that I'm going to share with you this morning. We have things to forget. The things which are behind. We need to forget things that are behind. I am not telling you to forget everything that are behind. I would like to bring to you three things that we need to forget which are behind. Number one, our past can be a great barrier to our future success. Our past can be a great barrier 
to our future success. You know, church, that many people or many folks in the is in the bandage with their past, not past success, but past failures. Many people are in bandage with their past failures, and so much that they are afraid to try to do something new because of the past failures. They are afraid to do or to try something new. You know, there was a boy who tried to learn how to ride a bicycle at young age, maybe at six, six years old. And he tried to ride a bicycle. I mean, he tried to ride the bicycle. He was, you know, he was thrown to the, to the street because he don't know how to ride a bicycle. And that experience prevented him to learn the bicycle up to the age of 15. Why? Because he is afraid to try again. Because he already failed. And you know, when you are thrown down into the, you know, when you, when you try to ride a bicycle, even me, when I was in elementary, I tried to ride a bicycle. And you see, bicycle has two, two tires only. It's good to ride a car. You see, it has four wheels. But when you ride a bicycle, it has two tires only and you need to balance. Without balance, then you have to synchronize your feet and your, your hands also. You have to synchronize your, your direction. And it's very hard for a person to learn to ride a bicycle. So this boy, he tried when he was six and he encountered, you know, something bad and it prevented him to try again until the age of 15 because of that experience. In the same way, it is, it is happening to us that our past failures will prevent us to try something new. I would like to share to you one person. His name is uh, Kunosuke uh, Matsushita. He's from Japan. This name is very hard, no? Kunosuke Matsushita. And this man is uh, a very poor, when he was a young boy, he was very poor. To the point that he was, he has nothing to eat. And when he, and also but this, uh, this boy has a brilliant mind, brilliant idea. But he was very poor, his family is very poor. His father and mother, they have no job. So he tried to, to go to, you know, to go to elementary, you know, to study. And he stopped because he don't have anything to, you know, walang taon. No food, no notebook, no pen. So he stopped, he stopped studying. And, you know, he sold newspaper, he sold the food in the streets in order to survive. And one day, because of his brilliant mind, you know what he did? He invented uh, a light bulb, you know, a, a light for the bicycle. He invented, you know, because that time, bicycle lights are uh, already invented, but it will, it will only last for two hours. So he invented a new kind of light for the bicycle type, you know, to the bicycle light that will last for eight hours. And uh, when he invented it, he, he went to the people who called themselves the wholesaler. The wholesaler, because when you, when you sell it to the wholesaler, they will buy a uh, you know, tremendous volume of your lights. But the problem, the wholesalers are negative about his invention. So he was discouraged and went home. How am I going to sell this bulb, you know, this light for the bicycle? You know what he did? Again, he went to the, another wholesaler and he was turned down. Another wholesaler turned him down. But what he did amazed everything. He went by, uh, you know, directly to the bicycle shops. Directly went to the bicycle shop and he said, try this bicycle lamp. 
and see to it and see for yourself that it's very effective. It will last up to eight hours, the battery. So they tried it, and when they tried it, they are amazed and they are happy. So the bicycle shops ordered volume of that light, you know, that fitting, the light fitting for the bicycle. And after the wholesaler knew about it, they ran before him and ordered a lot of things, of volume, volume, volume of this injection. And he became very, very nice. And his name is Konosuki Matsushita, the founder of Panasonic. Amen. He invented iron, he invented a lot of things. But you know, before he became successful, he was turned down many, many times. He was turned down many times. And if he surrendered and he stopped what he's doing and he stopped trying, what would happen to him? He would still be a poor boy. He would still become poor until the, until the day he would die. But because he did not stop, because he continued to try and try, he received success. Amen. The same with our spiritual lives. The same with our life. When you look back to your, your past, and you can say that, Pastor, I am a bad person. I have done a lot of mistakes, a lot of things I did, and I, maybe the Lord is angry with me already. And I cannot continue working in the church because I have bad experience. The Lord is telling you right now, forgetting what is behind. Forgetting the bad failures, the things that, you know, past failures. Okay? And look forward. Amen. Talapakan natin ang Panginoon. It is the same Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison, he invented a light. You know, he was the first to invent light. And you know what? He failed a thousand times. For example, he invented, when he invented the light, you know, even that work. But he tried and tried and tried. You know, that light bulb, we call it incandescent light. You know, the light, uh, you know, you know, incandescent light, we have two kinds of bulb. One is fluorescent light, one is incandescent light. So incandescent light was uh, invented by Thomas Edison. He failed a thousand times. What about when he surrendered, when he, you know, when, when he failed 800, at about 800 times, he surrendered. We don't have light right now. We don't have the incandescent light. But because of his continuity, you know, trying and trying, sabi nga nila, try and try until you... <laughs> sabi nila, try and try until you die. <laughs> Some people, try and try until they die. But, you know, for, for, for us, believers, Try and try until you succeed. You succeed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, number two. Past sins must be forgiven. Past sins must be forgiven. Apostle Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind. Forget those things which are behind. No doubt, Paul conscious of many failures. Apostle Paul, raise your hands. What is his name before he became Apostle Paul? His name was Saul. And you know his Saul? He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was a persecutor of the brethren. He was a killer of Christians. Apostle Paul was a murderer. Apostle Paul gave, you know, the, the approval when Stephen was stoned to death. He was there sitting, you know, and looking while Stephen was stoned to death. And maybe day and night, day and night, Apostle Paul was hunted by all the things that he did in the Christian brethren. 
You know, one day the Apostle Paul was traveling from Jerusalem to Damascus. And the Lord encountered him. The Lord appeared to him by a bright light. And he was blinded. And a voice from heaven calling him. So, so, why are thou persecuting me? And he said, who art thou? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. And then Jesus Christ revealed himself to Apostle Paul. You know, and he said, you will become an apostle. He called him an apostle to the Gentiles. And maybe when Apostle Peter became, you know, became an apostle, when he was working as a missionary, though there are things that he did in the past that is now hunting him. He persecuted the brethren. He caused a lot of Christians to die. Because he was, you know, a leader, a persecutor, a killer, a murderer of the believers. That's why he said in the verse, you know, in the Ephesians chapter 3, forgetting those things that are behind. You know, the way that he blasphemed the name of Jesus and persecuted the church, God must have hunted him day and night. And that is why in order for him to move forward to the ministry, in order for him to be effective in this mission work, he need to forgive, you know, for, forgive, forget the things that are behind. He need to, to, to move on to the things that are behind. I believe many people also, it's very hard for them to move on. No? Especially when it comes to, when it comes, when it comes to love. I mean, I said love, people are killing. You know, a lot of people, when they broke up with a girlfriend or boyfriend or broke up with a relationship, it's hard for them to move on. And uh, many people destroy their lives because of what had happened. Some people committed suicide. Some people, they, uh, they try to destroy their bodies you know, by engaging a lot of uh, vices, like cigarette, alcohol, you go to different places you know, for happiness, outside happiness. But you see, the Bible says we need to move on. When it comes to love, you have to move on. Accept the reality that He is not the one that the Lord has been prepared for you. Sometimes we are, we are saying, Lord, gusto ko yun. Gusto ko siya, Lord. Ang tanong, gusto ba siya ng Panginoon para sa'yo? So we need to ask the Lord for the will, for His will. Because our will might, be, might not be the will of the Lord. Amen. Because I believe later up, ladies, they're looking for tall, dark, and never mind. <laughs> so, they're looking always for that. You know, the attraction always is physical. That's a fact. That is true. When you see, uh, you know, good-looking man, they're always, they're always happy. When it's physically, but don't look for the physical. Go beyond. And later on, you will know the guy, you will know that he's a womanizer and he's an unfaithful man. Then, still. Don't you that pa In that case, not a, a Christian. Lord, gusto ko talaga siya, Lord. Gawin mo siya ang Christian, Lord. When you do that, you will reap a lot of consequence. You know, there was a, a man, you know, he's a, who is an officer, you know. Yung babae, yung asawa sa ng officer in the army. That lady was struggling. Years of struggling. Because his, uh, his husband is an officer of the army. And he's telling his wife, don't go to church. I will kill you. <laughs> he's a guy, has a gun, he's an officer of the army. And then what this woman has been uh, suffering for a lot of years in, in her life. Because the husband 
will not allow him, her, to go to the church. But one day, he made a stand. She made a stand. He said, I will go to church, no matter what will happen. So what will ha what had happened? So when he when she told the husband, the husband uh, honey, the darling, I will go to church. So sabi ng husband, kinuha niyo barel, sabi niya, the, 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 the pistol. I will give you two choices. Go to church or you will die. Sabi ng babae, this is between life and death. So kailangan mag-stand sa Panginoon. Sabi niya, if you kill me today, I will go to heaven. If you will not shoot me today and I will not die, I will go to church. Okay? So one day, nadala niya yung kanyang hasbal to church. Because he stand, she, she stood. Pero hindi ganun lahat mga kapakit. Do not gamble. Do not gamble your uh, your relationship with a person that is not a Christian. Hindi lang ganun. Baka <laughs> sa langit ang punta natin. No? Kaya kailangan, we need to, to be uh, cautious in everything that we do. That's why I told everyone, kung hindi yan para sa'yo, move on. Amen. Sino pa ba hindi dapat move on dito? Kung hindi nyo itas yung kamay ninyo. Pray to the Lord and sabi na po sa Paul, that is part of your experience. That is the part of your life. Part ng buhay natin yan. We need to accept it because whether we like it or not, if we don't accept it, it will haunt us, it will affect us. Even in the ministry, you cannot, you know, cannot go forward in the ministry. Why? Because your heart is occupied, preoccupied your heart. Pag tinatanong ka, Sister, ano, gusto mo ba ang ganito? Gusto mo ba ba? Uh, did you want to be, become a part of the music team? Pastor, I'm not ready. Mga ganun. Can't do it, Pastor. I told sometimes, even Moses was not ready when he was called by God. Even, oh, sino ba naging ready? So, all this, I mean, wala. Lahat sila unprepared. But their hearts, they have the desire. Sabi ko sa mga kapatid, if you have the desire in your heart, you can say, Lord, here I am. Send me, Lord. No? When the Lord is calling for a minister, you know, a person for the ministry, the Lord is looking. Because the harvest is plenteous. Sabi ng Bible, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Even in our church, we need people to, to bring the instruments. We need people to, to arrange the church. We need people to arrange the chairs. We need people to help us in the logistics. Because that is part of our ministry. But we don't have. So when the Lord will tell you, Ano sa sabihin mo? Lord, here I am. Send them, Lord. Lord, here I am. But send them. But the Lord is telling you today, if the Lord is calling you for the ministry, be willing. Kailangan ano tayo yung kung saan ka dali ng Panginoon, sasama tayo doon. When the Lord tell you to become a, you know, a music team member, and you have the potential, just inform the pastor, just inform the brothers and the sisters who are involved in the ministry. Huwag kayong patawag-tawag pa na, Sige, sali ka. No, you have, you have the drive. Kailangan yun. You know, some churches, you know, right now, many of the churches, they are focusing now on the young generations. Why? Because the young generations, they are full of power, full of expectations, full of... Uh, may mga drive yung mga young generations eh. Not all of them, but most of them. But the old people, parang maintain, maintain na lang. Diba? We do call them, Sister, mayroon tayong ano, we, do, we have a, a training. The Tribes and Mission Academy. We have a training, we have uh, something uh, to upgrade. Masasabihin lang, Pastor, wala na ako time dyan eh. Medyo maedad na rin, ano, hindi ko na kaya. 
Wala na, masakit na yung katawan ko. That's why churches today are focusing on the young generations of leaders. Because the young generations are full of power, full of expectations, and you want, you know, uh, you want change. They always want to change. Kasi yung mga young generation, yun ang gusto-gusto kong, aray, i-build up. I'm not telling na yung mga old generations natin, yung binibaliwala na kayo. But, you know, in the church, everyone is young. Amen? Amen! Amen! Amen. Diwala naman kayo. Diba? <laughs> Kaya pag wala ka ng plano sa buhay, pag wala, if you're no longer interested to, to build yourself, if you're no longer interested to, to upgrade, to level up your life, yun yung mga sign. Sign of ano? Sign of old age. Kaya habang gusto mo pa, Pastor, gusto ko pa, gusto ko pang, I want to elevate myself, I want to, to help the church, I want to upgrade my knowledge about the Bible, I want to do it, Pastor, gusto ko, Pastor. I believe you are still young. Amen. Tingnan niyo si Tata Ernie, he is 67, but still, glory to God, bumalik siya dito. He's already in the Philippines. You know, nag-re-retire na si tatay doon. Nandun na lang siya sa bahay nila. Tatahin na lang siya doon. Dato yung mga makin ang gamit niya. Now he's using only needle. Tatahin na lang siya. Nag-aalaga ng mga apu. But because of his heart to help us, to counsel us, to, uh, to nurture us, yet he returned to Abu Dhabi. Even without employment visa. Maraming para ng Panginoon. You know, when you have the heart, when you want to serve the Lord, and you have the heart, and you have the willingness, the Lord will make a time for you. Kaya minsan sinasabi natin, Pastor, wala kang time. Actually, the time is not a problem. The, the problem is your mindset. Because if you want to pray to your time, you can pray to your time. You can slice the time for this, you can slice the time in this, and you create a time for this. If your priority is the Lord, you can create a time for the Lord. But when you don't have the, the heart, when you are just maintaining it, come to church, okay, come to church, okay. That is a problem. I want this testimony sign that before you don't have time, but now you have time. It's not about the schedule of the work. It's not about the schedule of the church. It's about you. It's about your decision. Kung gusto mo talaga mag-church at mag-serve sa Panginoon, the Lord will create a time for you. Amen. Sabi nila, Pastor, family first. Hindi ako mag-church. Ayun ang asawa ko eh. I told you, the Lord first. Amen. Sabi ko, Pastor, pumunta tayo dito para magtrabaho. We came here to earn. Yes, we came here to earn. But our priority is the Lord. Amen. 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 Pag yung trabaho natin, hindi na siya nakaka-bless para sa Panginoon. You can make a stand. Lord, I start the job. Bakit hindi ako makapag-church? Do you think what the Lord will do? You think He will allow you to just leave the job and live a miserable life? No! When you choose the Lord, He will create something better for you. Pansin namin nung, pansin namin ng araw mo na hindi ka pwedeng mag-absent ng Friday. Sabihin mo, I will resign. Gusto sabihin ng araw mo, what do we do it answer to you? Okay, you resign. Do you think the Lord will allow you to resign no wala kang trabaho, no maghihirap ka? No! Why? Because you choose the Lord. It's always the positive principle in the Bible, in Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. All these things shall be added unto you. Hindi pwede yung pabayaan ng Panginoon. 
When you keep on working for the Lord, when you keep on doing the ministry, the Lord will not allow you to, to have a miserable life. I have my past failures also. I have my past consequences of the failures that I did. But I choose. I just have to forget. Lord, I choose to serve you. No matter what happened. So I told the members, even if all of you will go, I will not leave you. Even if all of you will leave the church, I will still serve the Lord. So I told the pastor, I will still serve the Lord. So I told the pastor, I will still serve the Lord. Even if all of the leaders go, no one can stop me, no one can, can, can uh, resist me in advancing the kingdom of the Lord. Sabi ko sa kanila, hindi magtitrain ako ulit ng mga leaders. Sabi niya, umiyak sila. Sabi niya, tuwawa naman si pastor, at kaya niya na tayong hayaan umalis. O, oh. kala niyo? <laughs> That is why, may mga umalis. You know, they, they left the church because they, don't, they cannot submit. You know, when, uh, when, when a worker of the church cannot submit to the pastor, it's a big problem. There is always a division. A spirit of division will be will always be in the church. Why? Because there is a rebellious spirit. So get trained of the rebellious spirit in order for the people to submit. You know, secret to do When you don't have the rebellious spirit, when your spirit is submissive, then you can submit to the pastor. And the pastor will, will enjoy the ministry. Right now, I don't have any problem. Because all the problem before, they left the church. Kaya ngayon ang natitira, puro mababait at masunuri. Praise the Lord. Kalapakan natin ang mga sarili. Kaya sabi ko sa mga kapatiran, wala tayong problema sa church. Ay, ibig sabihin, hindi yung dati kasi meron maraming division, uh, maliit na chiskis dito, gawa ng istorya dito, nag-aaway yung mga leaders. Right now, what hindi na yung nangyayari. Why? Because we are submissive. And we look to the care of everyone. And even the visitors, we are, we are so love, lovable. We accept all the people. We help them. We shake hands with them. When you go to other churches, I don't. I'm not this. You know, I'm not. 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 That a pastor of a church, he disguised to be a beggar. Kita nyo? He disguised to be a beggar. He nagsuot siya ng lumang damit. He put a mask, he put a beard, and he put an old dress. And you know what happened? He sat down in front of the church. In front of the entrance of the church. He sat down. I know the members of the church came, they just ignored the beggar. They just, they just pass away and see, but and they don't beggar na tong pangkaroon. And they went, all of them went to the church. No one invited the beggar to go inside the church. And this beggar, by his own decision, he went inside the church and go and went directly to the pulpit and remove everything in the mass, they put the disguise and they discovered that the beggar was their pastor. What a shame to the church. They don't even care for the beggar. Then nobody approached him, nobody gave food to him, nobody invited him to go inside. You know, this sometimes to the church. That is why I encourage everyone to kind the whatever they are, whatever they are, whatever circumstances they are having in their lives, mayaman, mahirap, payat, mataba, they are accepted in the church. I need to hug them. I need to shake hands with them because they are our brothers, our sisters. Amen. 
Yes, the Lord. So this is what we are. So Apostle Paul, balik tayo sa kwento na Apostle Paul, he was giving us things, you know, that we need to leave behind. Past sins we will leave behind. If you have bad experience, if you have bad, uh, you know, things done in your life, you need to leave, leave it behind. And forgive. You know? Forgive those people who hurt you. Then ask also for forgiveness for the people you have hurt. Then move forward. Do not look back. And, and again, you know, for something that, no, you have to forgive, forget. Sometimes in our lives, ano tayo? Sabi ng Bible in Hebrews 8.12 For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Tingnan nyo dito sa, sa verse natin. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12. Sabi niya, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. God already forgiven us and our sins, our trespasses, He forget. And yet we believers, we keep on remembering our past mistakes, our the things that we did bad one year ago, two years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, we still remember them, which the Lord has already forgiven and forgotten. So when you forgive, forget. Sabi ng pastor, mapapatawad ko siya. Pero, hindi ko kaya kalimutan na rin ang ginawa. I can, some people, you know, they will say, Pastor, I can forgive. I can forgive. I have no problem already with this person. I can, I forgive him already. But I cannot forget what he has done. He stole my money! <laughs> no, when you forget, no, you know, what happened to believers when we are forgiven? The Bible says we are justified. You know what is justification and what is forgiven? It's a bit big different. Forgiven, you have sinned and you are forgiven. Your sins have been forgiven. But you have sinned. The sin is dead. Justification is different. You have sinned, you are forgiven, and your sins have been forgotten as if you have not sinned. That is justification. Very different. So when, when God forgive us from our sins, He said in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12, I will be merciful to their unrighteousnesses and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Not one sin I will bring back again and tell this man to this woman, you have done this, you have done that. Kung asawa mo, nangyayari yun. Binabalik. But for God, everything you forget. The Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, I will remove your transgressions from you. As the depths of the ocean, I will bury them into oblivion. As if you have done nothing wrong. Kaya sa mga asawa, mga babae, mga lalaki, this is my advice. So mga gusto pa mag-asawa, oh, may mga talaga dito na gusto mag-asawa, yung mga naghiwalay, hindi pwede mag-asawa, basta hindi pa kayo legally na nilegalize. Bawal. Bawal sabihin nyo, pwede ha? Bawal yun. So we have a law, the Philippines, we don't have divorce. No divorce in the Philippines. Okay? Kaya sinabi ko, Pastor, divorce kasi ako eh. You are lying. Walang divorce sa Pilipinas. Sa US, meron. In the Philippines, we have annulment. If God you have pay 300,000. So, it's very hard. But sa mga dalaga na gusto mag-asawa at sa mga binata at sa mga medyo mainat na na gusto pa rin mag-asawa, okay, ito yung advice sa inyo. Sabi nila, ako yun ah. This is my advice. When you forgive, forget. Amen. When you forgive, forget. And don't bring back the past sins to your partner. Diba? Ganun ang nagagawin ninyo. When you forgive, forget. So kung nakagawa sa mga another 
ng pagkakamali, that is the first time na ginawa sa'yo. Every time na tumawa siya, this is the first time na ginawa niya sa'yo. Kasi marami sa atin, pang ilang beses mo ginawa. Hindi na kita mapapatawa. I can't forgive you already. Because you have done it many, many times. Why? Because you have already put a deadline or a limit. So kailangan ko magpapawad ka as if wala na siyang kasalanan. Pag gumawa mo siya ng kasalanan, that is the first time na gumawa siya ng kasalanan sa iyo. Yan ang ginagawa ng Panginoon sa atin. Pag hindi uminiyang mga katawaran, syempre, huwag mong patawarin. <laughs> patawarin ito pa rin. You can forgive, you can forget. And the Lord will talk to you. And the Lord will minister to you on how to handle the circumstances sa buhay natin. So past sins will be forgiven. Pabayanin natin yung mga kasalanan, yung mga nangyari. Learn from them. Huwag mong ulitin na yun kung ano yung nagawa mo. Kung palit-palit, hindi maganda. Number one, past failures can be a great future barrier for the future. Number two, past sins will be forgiven. Number three, We must also forget our past success. Ito yung problema sa atin. Pag marami na tayong success in the past, we don't need to work already. Kasi sabihin mo, Pastor, ang dami ko nang, I, I already brought a lot of souls in the church. And right now, I already have the limit. Kuta na ako, Pastor. Nagkuta na. Hindi na ako nadala ng, ano, ang sa akin nalang pasong, maintain, maintain nalang, no. Don't think about your past success. If you have succeeded a lot of times in the past, forget about it. Why? Because when you don't forget about it, it will hinder you to achieve more success in the future. Kaya mga may nasabi, dati akong ganito, dati, before I left this, before I like that. Dati akong ganito, napakain ko sa Panginoon. I'm so zealous with the Lord before. But right now, I am like this. I'm simple. I don't work to the Lord because I already have before. No. I tell you, whatever things you've done in the past, even your successes, whatever it is, forget about it. Because it will hinder you from creating and achieving more success. You know, one of the most subtle devices of the enemy is to slow us down by getting us to think and reflect on the memory of our past success. That is the device of the devil. He will remind you. Marami ka nang ginawa sa Panginoon. So, slow down ka na. Actually, it's not from the Lord. It's from the devil. He will give this idea to you. Pwede na kumalik sa church. I can go to church late every Friday. Because for the last five years, I was very early. Right now, it's my turn to become late. It's not from the Lord, it's from the devil. Before, I have brought a lot of souls in the church. And right now, I am relaxed. Marami na pong crown sa langit. No, it will not stop you. The key to a successful and fruitful life for Christ is to concentrate on today and not live on yesterday's blessings. This is a secret. If you want to live, you know, a happy life in, a, in your Christian life, a successful and fruitful Christian life, you need to, to, to live on the blessings of today. The blessings of tomorrow. Not the blessings of yesterday and the blessings you received a year ago. No, do not live with them. It will slow you down. You know what the Lord has done to the people of Israel when he or uh, when they went to the desert from the from Egypt when they were set free by Moses and they traveled to the wilderness. And when they reached the wilderness, they don't have food. They don't have anything to eat. And the Lord, and they murmured. And they said to Moses, Moses, we are hungry. We don't have anything to eat. 
And Moses asked the Lord, Lord, what shall I do? And the Lord sent manna to them. I'm in training for manna. And the people, because it rained manna, this manna is a bread from heaven. And these people, they ate the manna and they were filled. And some of them, they put, and, you know, they put something in the basket. And they put it in, in, their, uh, in their tent. Because they need to eat it the next day. You know what happened? Those manna became, became spoiled. It was spoiled. Because the Lord doesn't want us to leave, you know, things, you know, you know that we are going to uh, to do it. The things that we are doing today, that we need to bring it tomorrow and to other day and to the next day. The Lord wants us to leave the blessings every day. That is why the Lord sent manna in the morning. And every morning is showing them manna. No, in Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22 to 23, what is the Bible to say to us? This is the first Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22 to 23. Through, through, uh, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because His compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is the faithfulness of the Lord. Great is the faithfulness. That is the rest of this song on this one. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord. So this is what we are. We don't live with the blessings of the other day, or yesterday, or the year ago, because the Lord wants us to focus on blessing today. The blessings of tomorrow. Okay. Sometimes, as a church, we have seen many souls saved. You no, know, in the year, six year of the church, we have seen a lot of souls was being ushered to the ministry. And what happened? We praise the Lord for that. But some people, they already stopped bringing souls to the church. You know, those things that we have done in the last six years is very important. But it will not stop us from doing the things that we need to do today. Today is the time that we need to focus more on bringing souls to the church. We have a small church. We have a small place in Almaria Mall. And by God's grace and mercy, we transferred to a bigger place. We transfer to this place. Even if this is not yet finalized, we started to have to help you know, to hold this worship service. Why? Because we are looking forward that January 1st, Friday of January, we need to move and because we are preparing ourselves to the expansion of the church. Now is the time for us to bring more souls to the church. Invite your friends, invite your family members, if you have relatives, invite them to the church. Bring them to the church. Roommates, workmates, invite to the church. No need to share to them immediately that you need to receive the Virgin's Christ. If you don't receive him, you die tomorrow, you will go to hell. No, don't do it. Just bring them to the church. Allow the, the church to minister upon them. When you feel the love of the church, when you feel they have a, you know, the, the compassion of the church, when you feel that the church has blessings, when you feel that they are belong to the church, they belong to a certain people, they will feel it and they will enjoy it. And again, they will have the time to reflect upon their lives that they can say that my life here is different. My life in the church is different. This is what the life that I want. No need to, to rush. Some people are doing what they call shotgun evangelism. That is good. But you don't need to do it right now. Nobody is dying. No, nothing is happening. So we have all the time. Invite, introduce, bring people to the church. We need to fill this place. We need to um, bring more souls to fill this place for this year 2019. 
Are you ready for that? Raise your hands if you are ready for that. Raise your hands before the Lord. This is not a promise from pastor. This is a promise to the Lord. That in the circle of your friends, in the circle of the people that is involved with you, involved with you, bring them to the church. You know, in the circle of influence, you let them go. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, we are already finished for the things that we need to leave behind. Now we need to see the things that we need to look forward for the future. Number one, reaching for and to the things which are before. Most people are afraid of the future because of the uncertainty and the insecurity of not knowing what lies ahead. Some people are afraid to, to plan because they don't have anything in their hands. Some people they are afraid to embark into a new, uh, a new dimension of their, of their plans, a new side of their lives because they don't know what will happen. People are afraid. You know, one of the most subtle, you know, uh, they are afraid because there are uncertain things. There are, there are insecurities. Sabi nila, Pastor, I'm not sure if tomorrow I will, I have the same job. Maybe I will be transferred, maybe I will be removed from the company, maybe I will be uh, uh, transferred to Dubai or to another Emirates. But to tell you, don't be afraid. Reach for, for those things which are before. We need to look forward. Not only for yourself personally, but also to your family, but, and also to the ministry of the Lord. Amen. So, there is nothing that can ever happen that is not known by God and included in His will sa buhay natin. Nothing that will happen that is outside the will of God sa buhay natin. So, my encouragement to each one of us, we need to do the planning. We need to do, you know, some kind of uh, planning. And later on, the Lord will help you materialize the plan. When you plan, plan it according to the will of God. But I will take plan off. But sometimes, it is outside the will of God. Sabi nga nila, sa mga pastor, kailangan nyo pagplanohan natin yung church. Kasi pag hindi natin pinagplanohan yung church, tayo ang pagpaplanohan nila. Sa Pilipinas, di ba Pastor John, uh, Pastor John, sa Pilipinas maraming tinatanggal ng mga pastor. Pag ayaw na ng church, no? pag ayaw na ng mga elders, if the elders will not allow the pastor to preach, they can remove him from the church. The elder will, will call another pastor. So sometimes it, it is happening. But you know that, hindi kagawang Panginoon nang wala sa kanyang kagustuhan. Sa buhay natin, in our lives, everything that is happening in our lives, it is in the permissive will of the Lord. You know, church, even our, but uh, first of all, our needs are met. Needs. It is being met by the Lord. And also, our wants. Binibigay ng Panginoon minsan. But not all our wants are being given to us by God. Those wants only that is accordance, you know, in accordance to the will of God. Diba? Pag ikaw ay pumili ng maaasawa, balik din tayo dun sa pag-aasawa, God is respecting our wants. Siyempre, di ba? Kailangan naman Panginoon pakinggan ang anong gusto natin. Sabi ng Panginoon, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desire of your heart. Meaning, if, you, if your heart desire, if your heart is desiring to have this man or woman in your life, that is respecting it. And to the point that He will give it to you. Yung mga wants natin. Yung, the, the promise of the Lord is if we delight ourselves unto Him. So don't be afraid to, to embark on your future because even you want no, in accordance with the will of God, in the permissive will of God, 
He will grant it for you. Sabi ng pastor, minsan kasi, ang Panginoon ang pumili, at ito ang pinigay sa akin. Hindi mo katatap-tanggap talaga yung mukha. Hindi <laughs> naman yun ang Panginoon. You know, sabi nga niya, Delight yourself unto me and to the Lord and He will give you the desire of your heart. <laughs> Diba nag-desire tayo, di ba? Our desires, our, you know, our aspirations. May gusto tayong ma-receive sa buhay natin. Yun ang dapat natin ipag-pray. Kung ano po yun. And then, when the Lord gives it to us, we will be delighted. We will be happy. Amen. So number two, Press toward the mark. Press on toward the mark. So the picture that Paul uses to illustrate this truth is that of a runner. A runner. And yes, you know, a runner has a goal in mind. In every race, there's a finishing line. And a runner should always look to the finishing line. When you start, you know, start running. No. I did not see any, any person that is running in a race that looking looking back or looking in the you know, the surroundings and going there already and they have, having a coffee with them. No. They will focus the eyes on the finish line. In the same way, in our Christian life, we need to press on to the mark. What is the mark? The mark of our highest calling. You know, our service to the Lord. So, mayroon pong ending yung, yung, pag, yung paggawa natin sa Panginoon. And, we will never be all that God wants us to be if we have no goals. Kung wala tayong goals sa buhay natin, wala magagawa ang Panginoon. Hindi, hindi na tayo ma, nagdadala dun sa gusto natin papuntahan if we don't have goals. We created plans. We make our plans and the Lord will fulfill it in accordance to His will. May plan yung Panginoon para sa atin. Gagawin niya yun. Our plans should be in line with the plan of God. Kung wala tayong plan, for example, you don't, you don't have to be, uh, you're not planning to go to church. You stay at home, you don't take bath, you stay home. The Lord will not rapture you and bring you to the church. That is the, the, you know, the illustration that I will give to you. The Lord will not <laughs> till it transport you and bring you to the church. No. The Lord will allow you to stay there. But when it is a plan of God that you go to the church, and it is your plan also to go to the church because the Lord will impress your heart that you need to go to the church in the Friday morning. And in the evening, you iron your clothes. No other activities for tomorrow. I need to go to the church. I need to go to, uh, I need to, go to the bus stop. I need to, to ride to the bus. And I'll go to the city. And I'll go to the church. I will sleep early. I will prepare everything for tomorrow. That is the planning. In the same way, the Lord will do it. Amen. Next time, pray more, take. This is the Lord. So press toward the mark. We need to continue. You know, when you are on a race, even in a simple race, if you don't reach the mark, you will not receive the price. Amen. You will not receive the price. Because the price is at the end. And the Bible says, we need to press toward the mark. To the mark. Amen. And lastly, we need to see also the price. The price. We need to look forward on receiving the price. Kung wala tayong plano sa, sa buhay natin, wala tayong direction, wala tayong goals, then how can we be able to reach our destination? In the same way with our Christian life. In the same way with our, with our ministry. 
When you have decided in your heart, sabi ko, Lord, my, my ambition or my goal, that after three years, I will see Yusef Church, grown church, established church, and already ministering to the different peoples in this country. And that is your goal. And you can receive that prize. And you can receive that goal when you continue fulfilling it. When your eyes you know, is focused or uh, fixed on that prize, you will be able to reach it. I have an illustration that, you know, when you are walking in the wilderness, we are all familiar with the desert, right? Because we are in the Middle East. And in the Middle East, this is a deserted area. And during summer, during summer, it is very hot. In the month of May, June, July, and it's very hot. Imagine yourself, you're walking in the desert. You know, you're walking in the desert. And you cannot see the end of the desert. And you are already very, very thirsty. Imagine mo, imagine mo sarili mo, you are walking in the desert for maybe three to four hours. And in the desert, you can see the end of the desert. And you are walking and you are very thirsty and you are very tired, you are very hungry. And in the middle of the way, at about one kilometer, you saw a table. And there in the table, there was a pitcher full of water with ice. And your, you know, and your heart, and your mind, your mouth, <laughs> all your senses is focused on the table, on the pitcher, with the water, and with ice. Ganun po sana tayo sa Panginoon. Imagine yourself, nakikita mo yung tubig, you can see the water, with the ice, at the, in the top of the table, in the middle of the desert, at about one kilometer. Ano gagawin mo? Sige, mayroong mga fried chicken, may mga ice cream, ay wala ice cream, si Maramig. Mayroong mga fried chicken, may mga kung ano ano mga pagkain, may mga TV, may mga sasakyan, Ferrari, may mga kung ano ano mga bagay-bagay na sa harap at sa paligid. Ano gagawin mo? Ano kukunahin mo? Yung tubig. Kasi uha na uha na, you want to fulfill yourself with just, you know, water. Ganun sa natin sa Panginoon. That should be our our goal. Maraming kasayahan dito sa mundo. There are material things. There are life in this world. Maraming klaseng pagkain. Kung ano-ano. But when our eyes is focused on Jesus Christ, who is the source of living water that will give us water a living water that will fill us every day of our lives. That should be our focus. The price. And do na yung price. And we need to, to reach for that. For that price. So in 2018, and we need to forget our past failures, past mistakes, and everything that we have done. Now this price that Paul talks about is his reward, the reward of every believer. What is our reward? When you are doing things for the Lord, what is your reward? The Lord will not give you a lot of money. The Lord will not give you uh, fame, power, no. Your reward is in heaven. Your reward is beyond the world can give. And you know what? He's looking forward, Apostle Paul is looking forward to being with the Lord, being with the Master, 
and the master will tell him, Well done, the good and faithful servant. Ganun din sana ang sasabihin ng Panginoon sa atin. Well done, the good and faithful servant. And then in yourself also, you can say, in what is written in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, ganito rin sana yung masasabi natin. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, sabi niya dito, masasabi mo sana sa sarili mo na ganito, I have fought a good fight of faith. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved His appearing. Amen. We are expecting and we are waiting when the Son of Man will appear and He will bring us to where He prepared. You know, the Lord has you know, He left His disciples promising them that He is going, preparing a mansion before for all of you. And when He returns, He will bring us all in there. And this is should be, you know, our, you know, when we die, before we die, or before the Lord returns, when we face the Lord in heaven, pag tinanong ka ng Panginoon, what have you done, my son or my daughter? You can say to him, Father, I have fought a good fight of faith. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Amen. So this thing should be our deepest goal and deepest desire before the Lord. I would like everyone to please stand. This be the presence of the Lord. Let the God of Jesus. sing this song once again be with you as we minister to the Lord before we sing this song let's just reflect on these words church it's a wonderful opportunity that God is giving us to you and to me for allowing us to serve Him once again in this coming year 2019 
partir deste hino. Foi o calor.
of Jesus. We can put the glory and the honor, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Please be seated. As we continue.